If you want to be a good archaeologist, you gotta get out of the library and into the cinema. Apparently, the other week I went and saw Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, as is my duty as an archaeologist. And I nearly cried multiple times, starting for about ten minutes in, because they went hard on the archaeological references this time round. I tell you that. Oh my God, there was so much. I'm not going to use the word accuracy, but there was a lot of things included that warmed my little archaeologist heart. Therefore, our topic today is going to be Indiana Jones and the actual, very real, Antikythera mechanism. I won't be spoiling too much of the film because I'll mainly be talking about the actual real archaeology that has nothing to do with the film, but spoiler warning, just in case, I guess, if you're that bothered, calm down. But I must say, I noticed in the trailer, I found it very, very funny. Right, this is the trailer. Indiana retires. Is he retiring? I'm retiring. And when he retires his, like, university department, they give him a clock as his retirement present, which I think is quite a common, like, thing. Anyway, so he's gifted a clock, and he doesn't look very happy about it, right? Because somewhere in his possession, he has the ultimate clock of all time. He has the Antikythera mechanism in a drawer somewhere, and they're giving him the silly little stupid time-telling device. When he has tucked away the Antikythera mechanism, which can travel through time and track stars and planets and everything, he has the ultimate clock in his possession. That's what I'm trying to say. Which makes it doubly funny when he's completely underwhelmed by the fact that he's getting given this clock. Didn't notice that until I rewatched the trailer later on. And I was like, oh, he was given a clock. That's dead funny. Watch no one else find that funny or interesting. But that's how my mind ticks over. Ticks over. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of clock puns in this, isn't there? Uh... I also want to give a big shout out to Dig It With Raven for making an amazing antikythera mechanism a couple weeks ago. She beat me to it. I'm too lazy, I'm too slow. You know that I'm always late to the party when it comes to certain topics. Uh, but I will leave her video link below. It's a great video. Check her out. Subscribe as well. So grab a cuppa, hit subscribe, and let's take a deep dive. <laughs> That's another pun. Into the Antikythera mechanism. That's a pun because it's found in a shipwreck, by the way. Cheers. The Antikythera mechanism was discovered in 1901 by a group of sponge divers diving off the coast of Antikythera in Greece. The shipwreck was first found by Captain Dimitrios Kontos, I'm so sorry if I've said that wrong by the way, and his crew in 1900, and then they teamed up with the Royal Hellenic Navy to do a full excavation of the site. The shipwreck also contains statues, glass, coins, ceramics, all that good fun stuff that we're not interested in today, are we? No, we're not. But upon its discovery, the mechanism just looked like a big lump of like metal and dirt because it all congealed and sort of rusted together. It's made of metal by the way so that's, that's what happens. So it went completely unnoticed and forgotten for years because nobody thought it was anything interesting. Archaeologists were busy studying the cool stuff. The statues, the coins, the ceramics, all that other stuff. They were studying that and left the mechanism in a box. Quite literally to rot. It was a waterlogged metal object. It wasn't treated when it came out of the water because nobody thought it was that interesting, so then it sort of warped a bit. Yay! Unrelated, but I think I'm coming down with a cold, by the way. Sorry if I'm pure sniffling and all that. Sounding a bit more nasally than usual. It wasn't until 1902 when Valerios Stais noticed that part of the metal had a big chunk of like a gear sticking out of it, and he was like, oh, that looks quite important. Let's have a further look at that, shall we? bit late, right enough? It's already worked. Over time and through various like x-ray analysis photos and all that, the entire mechanism has now been split up into 82 individual bits, including over 32 gears, the largest of which has 223 teeth on it. Gear work, clockwork like this is incredibly intricate. If you look at the mechanism, it is incredibly intricate if you can imagine what it would have looked like before it was all rusty and that. But what's really amazing is nothing of this level of intricacy appears again until the 14th century AD. The initial shipwreck is dated to 80 or 70 BCE, which means the actual mechanism must be older than that. So this isn't just like a couple hundred years later this technology was found. We're going from BC to AD quite significantly. And now the mechanism, if you want to see it for yourself, is at home in the National Archaeological Museum in Athens, which I'm yet to go to. But you bet I will cry my eyes out. Oh, you know I'll cry my eyes out. I get overwhelmed by archaeology, it's too good. I'll be crying. <laughs> 
the actual Antikythera mechanism itself has been dated to between 205 to 87 BCE, which is a huge window for that to be made in. But archaeologists have suggested a more precise calibration date for the actual workings, not creation, but it's actual calibration. And that's either the 23rd of December 178 BCE or 204 BCE, but that's as precise as we can possibly get it. That's still a little bit up for debate. In its full glory, shall we say, it would have been housed in a little wooden box with little wooden doors on each side um, and inscriptions on either side. There's numbers and basically like an instruction manual. And it's essentially the oldest known analog computer, mechanical calendar, planetarium. It does a bit of all of that, to be honest. It can track solar, lunar and like eclipses and planetary movements for yonks in advance. And it was operated by a small hand crank, which we don't have anymore. The user would turn the hand crank to turn the dials on the front to line up with the day, and then that would align the planets where they would be on that day at that time, and the sun and the moon, and if there's gonna be an eclipse, it could track that as well. On top of that, it tracked the zodiac signs and their positions in the sky, and it followed the Egyptian calendar system, which was 12 months of 20 days. But what's interesting is, although the months are named in their Egyptian names, the names are written in Greek alphabet, Greek text. And when I say it tracks the planets, I mean it tracks the five classical ones, not all the ones we have today. So I'm going to see if I can do this off the top of my head and not look at my notes. Venus, Mars, Mercury, Saturn, Jupiter. Yeah, I got it right, I got it right. See, I can remember things sometimes. And just for a bit of fun, it also tracked the cycles of the Panhellenic Games. The most well-known one being the four-year cycle of the Olympic Games in honour of Zeus at Olympia. The four-year cycle of the Pythian Games in honour of Apollo at Delphi. The two-year Nemean cycle as well for Zeus and Heracles at Nemea and Corinthia. And then the two-year cycle of the Isthmian Games in honour of Poseidon at Isthmia. Oh, and on top of that, the Dodona Festival was also tracked there. Just for funsies, just for a wee laugh. So what more could you want from a literal mechanical calendar? It does all of it. Does it all? But why? There's loads of theories about who made it and where it was made. Theories. Stressing that incredibly. Theories. They're all theories. We don't know for sure who made it and why and we're never going to find out. Really. But I'm going to put forth a couple theories to you and you just can make your own mind up. And you can also go and read about all the other theories that it could possibly be. Because I'm going to give you the main sort of three. I'll get the worst one out of the way first. One theory is that the device was made in Alexandria or Pergamon because these places had very big libraries with all the information for engineering and all that. That's it. That's one. You could go further into that and be like, the specific person that stayed in Alexandria, the specific person that studied at Pergamon, but just as an overarching theme, they too are hotspots because the Library of Pergamon was only really second to the Library of Alexandria. So just bear that in mind, right? If you want to delve deeper into that, you can. I'll give you the further reading in the description below like I always do. So you can go and read that for yourself because I want to talk about the two main other theories, which are Archimedes and Hipparchus. Let's start with Archimedes because the film does spoiler. The mechanism relies on certain astronomical and mathematical theories in order to work. Enter Archimedes, the big man of maths. The best evidence we have of this is Cicero, huh? who actually visited Archimedes' tomb. And in his De Republica, he mentions that Archimedes built a machine. Hey, how you doing? I just went back to see if I could find the source to give the exact like passage where Cicero says the machine. Um, and my original source on Loeb has locked me out because I don't have an account and I don't care to make one. So apologies for that. I've just found this uh, document with a bunch of different translations of different bits that mention similar mechanisms. Because these translations can differ, this other one from Cicero has been translated more as a sphere than a machine and it's described more as a orrery or a planetarium. But I think it just depends on the on the translation you read, like all these ancient texts. Bloody annoying, I tell you. But I'll link them both in the description below anyway, because I think Loeb gives you like three pages to read for free, which is disgusting, to be honest. But enjoy your three free pages. Use them to read <laughs> the passage I was talking about, please. Um, and also, I'll just leave this whole document linked below. Ta very much. Which could track the five classical planets. Doesn't really say 
much else about it. Obviously, he's not going to call it the Antikythera mechanism because it only got that name because of where it was found. But he just calls it the machine. And that's convincing. But also, our mechanism does so much more than just track the five Glasgow planets. So are, could it really be the same one? Surely if it was this crazy cool invention, Cicero would have noted the other functions as well. But he's important nonetheless. Important enough for Harrison Ford and the Indiana Jones crew to favour Archimedes over Hipparchus. But to me, I think Hipparchus is arguably more favourable, but I, get, I do have a phobia of numbers and science bores me. But Hipparchus of Rhodes, kind of. He moved to Rhodes eventually, so he was of Rhodes. Hipparchus was a second century astronaut. <gasps> oh! Oh no, my tea! <laughs> Sick, man! No! No! <laughs> It's the ones that you love the most that hurt you the most, I'll tell you. What the hell? Anyway, as I was saying, Hipparchus is a second century astronomer whose main study was movements of the sun, the moon, and the truth. No, um, the sun, the moon, and eclipses, which of course the mechanism relies on to track the movements, specifically the irregular motions of the moon, which was Hipparchus's main area of study. The ship itself was carrying a load of stuff uh, a lot of like Rhodian ceramics and stuff, a lot of its goods were coming from Rhodes anyway, which would imply that then the mechanism was also coming from Rhodes, but we can't really prove or deny that. But it's just sort of assumed that, yeah, it could it could all be a ship of Rhodian goods going elsewhere, or it could have been a bunch of stuff from all over the shop, but there happens to be Rhodian ceramics on it. So we're not really sure about that one. But given the fact that it relies so heavily on Hipparchus's theories, even if he didn't make it, he at least helped or inspired the person who did. They at least learned from him or were aware of his findings. The school of Poseidonius was also in Rhodes, which was a huge centre of learning for philosophy, engineering and astronomy. As far as I'm concerned, it could have been a student who was studying at this school who was aware of both the theories of Hipparchus and Archimedes and used them together in tandem to create this one device that sort of covers all these bases, especially if Archimedes has made a planetary model, as Cicero suggests, this planetary tracking machine, maybe the student was inspired by that and used his maths and his original machine to then combine it with Hipparchus's one? I don't know the answers. Nobody knows the answers. There are other theories out there which I urge you to explore, look further into the libraries and that if you want. Let me know in the comments who you end up deciding on. I just think these are the strongest of everyone, really, um, or at least in my research that I found. If you think there's someone better, fire away in the comments, please, and let me know. And bear in mind, we don't have, and we probably never will have, any definitive evidence for who actually built the goddamn thing, Johnny. So why is this mechanism so significant? There's a good couple of reasons for that. First off, it's incredibly complex given the size of it and the age of it, it's incredibly small, really. Lots of tiny wee bothersome bits to work with, and they're all like handmade. So there's a lot of intricate, delicate work going into this thing. Secondly, we have nothing else like it until the 14th century Anno Domini, Common Era, 2nd century BC to the 14th century AD. That is a massive time jump where we have no other evidence for anything on that scale existing. In the 14th century we have these big massive astronomical clocks being made, for example Curtis Connors one in Prague. That's right, that belongs to Curtis Town now. Fishy, fishy, fish. Making it sticky. But bringing it back to the mechanism, was it a prototype? Was this the only one ever made? Were there others in circulation that we just haven't found? Are there predecessors or successors that we're currently missing and we just haven't found them yet? Until the discovery of the Antikythera mechanism, we had no idea that the ancient Greeks had discovered this technology and were using it on such a delicate, minute scale. Was it more commonplace than we think? What else was it possibly used for? What else are we missing? Probably a lot. To quote Tristan Hughes from the Ancients History Hit podcast, well, there you go. <laughs> Behold the secrets of Indiana Jones and the real, the very real Antikythera mechanism. Sorry, it doesn't take you back in time or DHU. An incredibly significant, one-of-a-kind find that could possibly tie back, well it does tie back, 
to Hipparchus and Archimedes themselves, even if they weren't directly involved in it. They've inspired it and their theories were put to work to create it. Let me know who you think made it, what other theories had possibly inspired it, and also its possible function. Was it a navigational device? Was it just a calendar? Could there be more out there? Do you think it's maybe a bit too extravagant to have multiple? Maybe it was a uni project and that was them sending it off for their final mark. <laughs> if you'd like to do some further reading, I always leave my bibliography below or fact check me. Or if you don't believe me, I don't see why you wouldn't. I'm a very trustworthy person, I'm quite fine. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you learned something. And if you didn't, watch it again. Take notes and ring the bell while you're at it. And I shall see you all next Tuesday. Take bye, troops. Have a lovely day. Don't get hit in the head by your poster and spill your tea everywhere. Bye bye.